Hi guys. Hold on, let me scoot back a little bit. Let me see how many people are we gonna get tonight? I do have some wine tonight, you guys. Because I'm gonna need it for this video. Um I don't even know where to start. So I'm sure like a lot of other um, black women content creators, I'm sure we are currently <laughs> getting just, I don't want to necessarily say attacked, but you know, black men keep coming, black men keep coming for us regarding this Chad Wheeler situation. So I decided, let's talk about it. What you want to talk about? Now, there was a photo that I posted to my community tab. And I'm going to pull it up right now. I don't have the software where I can show it on my screen, so I'm just going to show it on my phone. But this is the photo that I posted to my community tab. Okay. So just as real as this photo is for black men, it's just as real as it is for black women. So just as real as this photo is for black men, it is the same for us as, as black women. Okay. If you want to go look at it, you can look at it on my community tab. That's why I posted that photo. So just as real as it is for black men. Okay. The photo is just as real for black women. So I'm just trying to, I'm a little confused as to why are why are black men acting like because she's choosing to be romantically involved that that changes something when they deal with the same thing so I, i'm just curious i, I really want to get um their perspective on that because just as real as that photo is for black men is just as real as it is for us as black women that's why i posted that photo so, um, I don't understand. Chad Wheeler, he plays for the Seahawks. So hopefully you guys are caught up. So, oh, you guys don't have, you guys don't know anything about this. You guys don't have a backstory at all. Let me pull it up. I'm going to read it to you guys. Um, I also want to add that um, black women are not safe anywhere. Okay. So Seahawks offensive lineman. Chad Wheeler arrested after vicious assault on girlfriend. Now, some of you guys may be a little triggered by this, but I'm just going to go into it. If you are not in a good space uh, mentally and emotionally, then I will go ahead and click off right now. Okay. So I'm assuming that if you are on this live moving forward, that you can handle this situation because it has a lot to deal with domestic violence. So it says here that events happened over the weekend that transpired from a manic episode. I am deeply sorry for the pain and suffering that I have caused to Aaliyah and her family. Now, this is from Chad Wheeler, the one that committed this horrific act. And from her, this was her statement, okay? This is his girlfriend's statement. He's 6'7", 300 and like, what, 10 pounds, something crazy like that. 
But this is what he had to say or what she had to say. She said, what was most terrifying was how cold he was. And this is from an alleged text read. So he thought I was dead on my bed and con and continued to eat dinner. When I ran into the bathroom, he said, wow, you're still alive while sipping on a smoothie. So be following these events, the Seahawks, they released a statement saying that Chad Wheeler, who is no longer on the team, and so they released this full-blown statement. You know how the NFL is. They don't play about stuff like this. Y'all know they don't play about stuff like this. So he was immediately released. But the issue that I have with the NFL is that the ESPN, they are in cahoots with each other, and ESPN did not speak on this story on their platform, on their network, because he was white. Another issue that I have with this entire situation is the simple fact that they're wanting to label this a uh, mental health manic episode because he's once again white. And to the black women that are buying into this, buying into that, you are also buying into your own oppression as a black woman while dating a white man. You know that's a load of shit. So I don't even know why people are even buying that because reality is this. The media loves to portray white men to have mental health issues when they commit crimes. So I'm not buying that either. So black women, y'all want to run with that? Y'all can run with that. But please understand that you're buying into your own oppression at the end of the day when you do that. That's just real. You can sugarcoat it. It is what it is. That's real as hell. So keep that in mind when you run with that, when you know that's a load of shit. The girlfriend texts that. So I guess um, with everything that was happening, they got a hold of her phone and that's what text messages were reading. Or maybe they got the text message from a friend. I'm not sure. But yes, they labeled this mental health illness. Um, but this is my thing too. This is this is my thing too. Um, black men who want to make this about race. Listen, I don't make everything about race. I make things about behavior and patterns, point blank period. And the issue that I have with this is that black women are once again left unprotected. Once again, we're left unprotected. Once again. You think this is what I want to ask black men. You think. <laughs> you think you could go to a white neighborhood and beat on a white woman. You think you can do that? You think you can go to a white neighborhood and beat on a white woman and get away with it? Any any black men on here? Yes, now I'm making it about race. You can a can a black man go to a white neighborhood and, and beat on a white woman and get away with it? I, I'm just curious. I just want to know. No, you can't. No, you can't. And, and see, that's the issue. Uh, what's his name? I'm going to just call you CEO. What does that have to do with black men? Black men don't want to be men no more. And it's really sad. It's actually pathetic. You, you don't want to be men anymore. It's really weird. Anyone can go to the hood and commit a crime, basically, and you not do nothing about it. You don't protect your women and you don't protect your children. What does that say about you as a black man? As a black king? What are you a king over? What community? What community? What community? Listen, all I know is if that happened to me, that man would be dead. That man would not be walking. That man would be dead. I know that for a fact. 
No doubt in my mind. If that happened to me, that man would be dead. That man would be dead. Um, it's not about race. No, it is about race when we speak on the fact that this man was able to do that to that woman. And, and all black men want to talk about is the fact that she was with him to begin with. Okay. Again, if you was to go do that, you could have, you, if a black man was to go and do that to a white woman, you could have been dating a girl. Y'all could have been in a relationship that a white man would not allow you to get away with that. You would be dead. So y'all letting this man walk around scot-free. You don't protect your women. You don't even protect your children. You don't even raise your children. They don't even respect you in that way. Why is that? Why is that? I'm not sugarcoating it. Why is that? Why is that? A white man don't care if you're dating a girl or not. If you did something to that white girl like that, you're dead. That's why y'all don't go to his neighborhood. That's why y'all don't go to his neighborhood. Because you know you ain't got it like that in his neighborhood. Can't say the same when it's reversed. Can't say the same when it's reversed. It makes y'all look weak. It makes it makes y'all look weak that that man was able to beat on that woman and nothing happened to him. It don't make us look weak. It makes y'all look weak. It makes y'all look weak. And then this is another thing. Um, another thing that I find funny when it comes to this conversation is that, you know, um, Black men love to protect men in their community because of their image. They are so afraid of holding other men accountable because they're afraid that it will ruin their image. But what they don't understand is it's ruining a whole community. How did Von die, the rapper? That was what, black on black crime. How did the other rapper die? That was what, black on black crime. Uh, Mo, whatever, Mo West, Mo, whatever his name was. That was black on black crime. So y'all not even safe. That's what's funny to me. Y'all get mad at black women for not abiding by some street code. We don't snitch. We don't da da da. We don't we don't rat out other Mo three. That was his name. Pop Smoke. All of them, right? Um, y'all signed up for that street life. We women did not do that. So y'all want us to abide by some bro code that you have with your friends, your homies, the ones that would stab you in the back if they had the chance. Don't make something of yourself. Don't have something to lose. Your ass would be dead too. That's what's so funny to me about this entire situation. I'm not mad. All I know is if that was me, that man wouldn't be, he wouldn't be walking. He would be dead. So it's funny how black men want to protect their image so bad to where they protect men who would murder them too, would kill them too, would shoot them too, would stab them too. I mean, I think it's, I, 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 come on. Are we, and it's because you guys don't protect your community. You don't protect your community. You don't hold other black men accountable because of what? Some street code of snitching? Some street code of snitching? But then you want to get on this white woman, You or not this white woman, you want to get on this black woman because her boyfriend beat her as if cops are not shooting you, as if your own people within your own community ain't shooting at your ass too. That's what's funny to me. That's what's funny. So y'all want to get on the swirlers. Listen, I'm not a swirler. I'm not a divester. I'm a supporter of, the, of, of these women. I'm a supporter. I support black women, period. I don't care what it is. As long as the intentions are good, the environment is healthy, I don't care. I don't care. And I never said that I was a, this is a divesting uh, channel. I never said 
I never said that. I never said I was a squirreler. I don't know where you guys got that from. Not sure. And I'm going to still talk like I do. Because we speaking on what we see in these streets. We're not speaking on what, what it looked like online. No, I, I think... <laughs> Like, you know, when you put serum on your face and like it gets in your eye. Oh my gosh. So I put some, I put some serum on my face before I got on slab. Okay. Anyway, it's like burning because it didn't got it. It's a little irritating. Anyway. Um, if you really want to get at me, you're going to have to pay me for me to like really get it. This is just too many comments. I can't even look. So I'm just keep talking. Okay. Anyway. Um, but the issue in our community is the fact that fathers are not in the homes. That's the issue. The black family is dead. The black family is just dead. And, and, and then y'all love to blame black women. Y'all love to blame black women. I don't get it. It takes two to have a baby. Y'all never hold the men that abandon their families accountable. Y'all never hold the men that abandon their families accountable. Ever. Y'all hold them in high regard. I just think it's funny. Your life, listen, if you didn't have a daddy in your life, you need to hold that man accountable. You need to hold that man accountable. Because your life turned out the way that it did because he wasn't there. Not because your mama was there. Not because your mama didn't leave you hanging high and dry. Your mama stayed. She did what she had to do. But, you know, y'all love to blame single motherhood. Your mama did the best that she could with what she had, which was limited resources. That's what she did. But y'all love to blame the black community on women. Y'all don't want to protect. Y'all don't want to defend your own community. Remember, this is your home that I'm speaking on. I'm not speaking on the white man's home. I'm speaking on your home. You don't want to protect. You don't want to defend your own community. Anyone can walk up in there and do whatever they want to do, with whatever they want to do, with whoever they want to do with it. Because y'all don't do nothing. Who wants to be a mod? Who wants to be a mod? What I don't like is how black men are trying to bully uh, black women for dating out. Okay, let me add you, Bree. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ah, ah, I lost you. Okay, let me add you. Who else wants to be a mod? Okay, I added two. Now, if I need to add more, I will. Black Beauty, hey. Okay. So, like I was saying, I just don't like it when I see black men trying to bully um, black women because they dating out. Listen, these men don't pay none of your bills. <laughs> they not paying none of your bills. They not doing nothing for you. They can kiss your ass. That's how I feel. Y'all be letting these men get to y'all and I don't get, I don't I don't understand why. They not paying your bills. They not protecting you, they not defending you, they not looking out for you, they not looking for you. They not looking to see if you're okay, your well-being. Why do y'all take them serious? I don't. I know who to take serious. I got a daddy, I got two brothers. I don't know how many male cousins, uncles. <sighs> And y'all don't scare me either. Y'all don't scare me. I told y'all, if y'all was, if, if something was to happen to me like that girl, dead. Without a doubt. Hey, Ashley, thank you for the $4.99. I'm protected. So that's why I come on here talking reckless because I can talk how I want to talk. I got men in my life ready to protect me. Ready to die for me. Ready to go to jail for me. Ready. 
I didn't grow up in a fatherless home. So when I come on here and speak, please understand, I'm being advised by a black man. And you know what he told me? I asked my daddy, I said, what advice would you give to black women, young black women who are dating? You know what he told me? He said, keep hope alive. I said, that's all you got? He was like, that's all I can give. And he said, you know, I raised two boys. He said he raised, raised, fathered two boys. And he said, when he looks out into the community, he said, they, his two boys that he raised would be on an island by themselves. I said, well, why you say that? He was like, they lost. He said, black men today are lost. My own father said that. So y'all funny. Y'all are funny. I ain't bitter. I'm not angry. I done been through some stuff, but I just, I don't know. Let, I, listen, this world and the things that I go through is not going to steal my joy at the end of the day. So my daddy know what's up. My daddy's an OG. He's seen, he seen the transition. He's seen what men used to be and what men are today. And he sees that there is a huge difference. So I, I don't care. You can't speak on, you know what? I'm going to just block you. Okay. <laughs> uh-uh. Like my brothers, they know how to fix cars. They know how to change tires. <laughs> they know how to fix things around the house. My older brother just started his own business. My younger brother is trying to get into wholesale real estate. Please, please don't. Don't come for them. Please don't. They actually trying to do something with themselves. They don't have no kids. They in their late 20s. They don't have no kids. Please don't come for them because I'm going to have to put you in your place. They don't have no kids. My 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 parents don't have no grandkids. They don't have no kids. Okay. So y'all funny. Uh, I thought I blocked J JD. I'm pretty sure I did. But yeah, like I was saying, um, they trying to do something with themselves. Are they perfect? No. They're not perfect. My brothers, my brothers are not perfect, but they try. That's the thing. They try. They try. And that's that's and, and I'm protected. So they doing something. If I can sit up here and say if something was to happen to me, your ass would be dead. I know that for a fact. Um let me see. I hopefully I pronounced your name right, but Shani, that's why now I only date 40 plus these early 30s still dealing with complexion issues. <laughs> there is that is that's hilarious, but I can't even listen. I cannot stereotype. I can't. I can't stereotype. I just feel like whatever works, let it work for you. It could be an age gap. It could be different race. It could even be different sex. Like if, if you are someone that's sexually fluid, you're into women, just do whatever works for you because black men love to make it about them. But I'm also in support of, uh, I'm also in support of, uh, black women who are queer. Like, I don't care if you happy, you in a loving relationship. I don't care about that. Black men care about that. But I don't care about that. You in a happy, loving relationship is healthy. You got my support, sis. I'm happy for you. I don't care. Black men be so bothered by black women being in healthy, loving relationships. I, I'm just so confused about that. But then they ask, let, let me stop cussing. They can't even walk down the street in their own neighborhood and be safe. I don't get it. I think it's funny. 
Yeah, I'm like, I, I, listen, what, listen, older black men can be a trip. Younger black men can be a trip. White men can be a trip. Everybody can be a trip. There's good and there's bad people in this world. You need to figure out what you're dealing with as a black woman. Is this a good person or is this a bad person? And that includes when you date other women. Is this a good person or a bad person? That that skin matching and being related and being blood, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing in today's society. That may have meant something back in the day, but your own blood can cross you. I, my own cousin, my own cousin commenting crazy, crazy mess on my Instagram, attacking my family from a fake page. So it ain't even just black men. I I I don't just trust people, period. Like I don't care who you are. Oh, your own family can stab you in the back. It's all about character. I stress that I don't know how much on my channel. It's all about character. I don't care what you look like. Thank you. I'm gonna just call you Manny. Thank you so much. Thank you for the 15 duelist girl. Thank you so much. Family a trip too. That's why I'm just like, why are we? Why do y'all get on this app and just be pretending like <laughs> real life ain't happening in these streets? That's what really be making me upset. Black men can't even walk safely down their neighborhood, and since they feel like they can, I, I don't want to see no black women out here marching. What you marching for? They they claim the neighborhood is safe. They claim it's safe. What you out here marching for? I wish I would see it. Listen, black women out here marching for black on black crime. Let these men march. Let these men march. Y'all want to talk about us? You can't even walk down the street in your own neighborhood. Stop it. Y'all funny. Y'all are funny to me. Y'all are funny. Y'all are funny to me. Y'all can't even walk down the street in your own neighborhood. It's just that we as women, we're an easier target. We're an easier target. That's just the reality of the situation. And, and some of us go to the police. Some of us try to get our families to help. Right? And we can't get no help. So what do we do? We come to platforms like this. We go to Instagram. We go to YouTube. We tell our truth. Shit we've been through and you got a problem with that because you a proud black man and you don't want your image to be ruined. Not my problem, sir. My life matters more. Sorry. The hell? They be so worried about their, their image being ruined. I'm a black man. I'm a black man. Don't ruin my image. Well, you know what? If you actually held the black man in your community that's causing destruction, by the way, accountable, your image wouldn't look so bad. It wouldn't. If you actually wouldn't create single mothers in the community, it wouldn't look so bad. Your image would not look so bad. They'd be so worried about their image being ruined. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then um, <laughs> the other day, it's okay. So this one man, he was like, under my video, he was like, 94% of black men marry black women. I said, well, out of that percentage, how many are healthy relationships? How many are healthy? 94% of black men still marry black women. I just want to know how many are healthy. I want to know how many are healthy, honey. Because when I be looking at black women in relationships and uh, marriages, I be like, girl, why are you stressed? Losing your edges, losing your hair, gaining weight, stressed out. just want to know how many are in healthy relationships they always use no we, let's just go along with it let's just go along with the statistics 94 percent of black men still marry black women cool how many are healthy relationships how many
I don't want to say none. I don't want to say none because I see I see healthy relationships. I do. I do. But it's just not a lot. It's not a lot. It's just not a lot. It, it's not a lot. I be seeing black women suffering. That's what I be seeing. Hell, that uh, black lady that was with that proud boy. Hell, she looked healthier than the women that I've seen in, in relationships with black men. Off of one photo. I said, you know what? I really don't agree with this image because I don't agree with the image. Due to the history of this country, I didn't agree with the image. But I'm like, damn, she look healthy as hell. She got her edges. She was low-key going. That's what I said. I, I said the same thing. That's why I'm just like, <laughs> listen, let's talk about it. Let's really talk about it. She looked healthy as hell. I didn't like the image. Wasn't really feeling it. But sis looks good okay she still was in shape and everything looked feminine and happy so what's really tea so when i spoke out on it i'm like you know what let me not even focus on the image because you know i really don't agree with that but she didn't look like she was suffering to me Yes, it's this wine. Hold on. Yes, I am, because I got to get rid of this negative energy. Anyway, to the bums that are on here, my brother just started his painting business, for those who want to know. Black man started a painting business, competing with his counterparts. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yes. Mm-hmm. To the ones that living with their mama in their basement. Listen, I know, I know a black, I know, you, you know what? I'm not, listen, I have black women in my family that are in marriages with men, with black men who don't want to work, <laughs> don't want to work, expect for their woman to foot all the bills. They don't believe in fixing up nothing around the house. Uh, they believe in just sitting on the couch all day. My daddy see this type of stuff and he don't understand because he just be like, now when I was your age, I had some hustle in me. I worked three jobs. I know another black man had a whole baby on the way. He didn't even work a job the whole time this girl was pregnant. And she was just as stupid as him. I'm like, girl, why the hell would you get pregnant by this man? Listen, she got pregnant the first time, lost the baby. She got pregnant a second time. Girl, why? He still didn't get a job. I don't get that. I don't get I don't get, I don't get that on both sides. I don't I don't get that on both sides. Stuff that I be seeing. I don't, I don't get that on both sides. It don't make that don't make no sense. I I don't get that on both sides. So yeah, whole time she was pregnant. He waited until after the baby was born to get a job. What? I don't get that. The, I mean, nine months, you just sitting, just not doing that. That's very weird. So, yeah, that that's what I, that, my daddy be seeing that stuff. He just be like, what? When he found out my mom was pregnant, he did everything he needed to do in order to get ready for her. But he married her first too. So I don't know. I just, I don't get men today. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't know why she got pregnant a second time. I don't know why she did that, but it's two stupid people when we speak on the situation, him and her. We need to give the girls birth control. Listen, I don't believe in birth control either. 
harmful to your body. This is why I just don't have sex. I just don't have sex. I'm, I'm thinking about interviewing my dad. I'm thinking about bringing him on here. For sure. And, and and also, to the women that's on here, your man working, he working a lot, leave that man alone, okay? I know some women out here, this, this man don't want to work. Listen, I don't, I've never, I've never stayed on birth control for more than three months. Never had an abortion. I just believe, just don't have sex. Okay. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 27 years old. 27. 27 was when I decided to lose my virginity. So do what you want with that information. And you want to know why? Because all the women in my family got pregnant young. All of them got pregnant young. All of them got married young. And I said, you know what? I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be me. So, and, and you know, when you have a daddy too, my daddy was strict. I couldn't wear nail polish, couldn't wear weave, couldn't wear makeup. I didn't start wearing makeup until about one, one time I wore it to graduation. That was it. I couldn't wear it anymore after that. But my daddy was strict. Strict as hell. I had to be at home by 11 o'clock. My friends could be out to 12, 2 o'clock in the morning. Not me, not Kiana. I had to be home by 11 in high school. 11 o'clock. No one believes me when I say I waited till I was 27. But you know what? I don't care. That's my truth. So, yeah, I couldn't wear finger. My dad didn't even let me wear fingernail polish. I couldn't get my nails done. Couldn't wear a weave. He was so big on um, me embracing my natural beauty, which now I understand why he was the way that he, I now understand why he is the way that he is. Ooh, okay, 27-year-old. Let's make being a virgin pop. How about that? Um, one thing that I did do was I lied to my friends for a very long time about my virginity. I told them that I lost it already just because I didn't want to be pressured. So, yeah, I was walking around a virgin lying about that. I wasn't. That's my truth. And it was easy because when you're growing up thick, people automatically think you're loose. So it just worked for me. So it is what it is. Do what you got to do. But no, I didn't I didn't lose my virginity until 27. Now, I will say this. Do I have regrets about my virginity losing it? No. Um, gracious, hold on, let me, let me stop. Are you the youngest? No, I'm not. I'm the middle child. So I'm the only girl, but I'm the middle child. My brother calling me right now. <laughs> he probably saw my Instagram post. He like, oh, hell. Listen, this man right here, do you see him? He would kill for me. Now, when I was sexual, this is another thing is people don't understand this. I was sexually assaulted when I was 19 years old. Anally. So I can relate to, to some, I can relate to gay men and their, mis, their molestation. And when I was, when I was younger, I would say around 20... 14, 2015, um, 
What's his name? Kenneth. Who watches Kenneth? Uh, flaw uh, flawless, flawless. Who watches flawless? Who watches flawless? Is it I am flawless? Anybody on here that watches him? I'm looking. Hold on. Yes, he okay. He's flawless. When he talked about his molestation story, oh my god, I, I felt so much better about my my situation. And at the time, I was very confused about if I was still a virgin or not. Um, bookworm, I am still a proud black man. Virgin, okay. I want to see more of this. My friends knew about it and told me to take my time, and I appreciate that. Take your time. Yes. Thank you for the $10. So, he flawless. Um, he flawless. He, he helped me with that. This was before I started going to therapy. And um, when he talked about his molestation story, he really helped me with that experience. So um, thank you guys. But like, I literally had to go to therapy about that because I was very confused. I didn't know what to even think of my experience my assault i didn't even i don't even know how to even think about it but um it was just a, it was just a lot it was just a lot it was just a lot it was a lot and um i can't even lie you guys like i have to i have to keep it a stack um i was under the influence i was underage and because I was under the influence and I was underage, I just dropped out of college and just pretended like it never happened. Never told my parents why it happened. I just, I blamed myself for a very long time. And another thing, this is another thing. Black women, we protect black men so much to where we self-destruct. I did not tell what happened to me because I wasn't protecting the person who did what they did to me. I was protecting my brother and I was protecting my father because I knew if I told them who did what to me, I feared that they would retaliate in a way that would land them in jail or God knows what. So I never told them. Now I did tell my older brother, I told my older brother um, what happened. Cried like, I mean, this, this man cried like a whole baby, you know, and I just never went into detail. And to this day, they drill me. Who did it? We just want to know. And I don't tell them because I'm like, I know how you, I, I, I just, I fear what you would do. So I have to keep it to myself. So what a lot of people don't understand is the main reason I don't say who it was, who did it is because I'm not protecting him. I am protecting them. So, um, that's my story. Like that, that is, that is my story. And it, you know, and it was a black man that did it. He was an athlete, star athlete, star athlete that did it. So black, black men don't under like, they don't get it. That's why I kind of related to Megan the stallion, but now I don't even know where that story is going. So don't even attach, don't even attach me to that story. Cause I don't even know how to feel about that story. But, um, I kind of related, but then I don't know where, I don't know, just no. Um, but yeah, I was protecting my father. I was protecting my older brother for sure. I was just protecting my brothers. I was protecting them. I was protecting the men that protect me. And I knew if I said something that um, it wasn't going to be good. And and that's what black men don't don't understand. We protect y'all, and you don't even know it. 
So when you guys want to be, uh, when you guys want to have your so-called rules, regulations, expectations, and limitations for us as black women when it comes to our protection, it's just crazy to me. It's absolutely insane that you guys have all these limits. But when it comes to us, we protect y'all without thought, without hesitation, without hesitation. This is why I'm so hard on y'all. It's because it's just like, get it together. Get it together. And when I do my commentary, I don't ever say y'all dumb, stupid, retarded, just dumb. I just say y'all need to compete because y'all not. Statistically, you're not competing. That's facts. Start a job or, or no, get a job, start a business, go to school. Create a family. Make a legacy. Go pursue your purpose. I... <laughs> What is wrong with that? I'm not telling you you can't do it. I'm not saying you stupid. I'm saying go compete. Oh my God. But y'all want to sit up on this app and argue with me from your mama's basement. Stuck. Wondering why your life is so miserable. Not my problem. Oh my God, black men want to be victims so bad. I done been through hell. Hell. You looking at a girl that done been through hell. You don't see me complaining. So suck it up. It's just weak. Literally. Like, I, I'm like, you guys, I'm pretty sure I should have gotten stitches after what was done to me. I'm pretty freaking sure. So. Y'all weak. When I say weak, I say it from a place of just like, suck it up. Seriously? Y'all just weak as hell. It's ridiculous. Black men, <laughs> hold on, black men clearly need therapy, but some of them are obvious to it. Like black women need therapy just because of trauma while growing up and their negative experiences. Peeps in a relationship need couples therapy. Facts. Facts. Thank you so much for the donation. Thank you. Yes, suck it up. Be acting weak as hell. Suck it up. I don't. And then some of them, it's like I don't been through way more than you. Things that happened to me that should have kept me from being successful. I'm still making it. You're looking at a girl that had a speech impediment issue. You're looking at a girl that didn't speak for a very long time. When I was younger, I didn't even talk that much. My older brother used to talk for me. You can ask my mama. I didn't speak. I was very quiet. Why? Because I was a daydreamer. The reason why I had a speech impediment issue was because I never paid attention. I was always daydreaming. So I had a speech impediment issue, which caused me to have a learning disability the only time I was ever successful in school was when I got one-on-one -on -one attention, tutoring, one-on-one. -on -one. That was the only time I was succeeding in school, which was hard because when I was younger, my parents couldn't afford to send me to like private school. They couldn't afford tutoring sessions. They couldn't afford it. So they did what they had to do, the best that they could do, right? So that meant... I went without. So I was delayed in speech. I was delayed in reading. I was delayed in, in, in comprehension skills. I was delayed. Somehow I got a YouTube channel speaking. How? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I be asking God, like, God, how? How? I'm like in first grade, I remember in first grade, I'm reading, I'm, I'm in this reading class and um, I just remember being in there with Hispanics because of course th their first language is, isn't English. Their first language is, is Spanish. So I'm in here with a bunch of Mexican kids learning how to talk English, learning how to read English. So it's just like when men, black men use all of these excuses, 
I've been through hell. That's just not going to work on me. It's just not going to work. Now, when, when I, I think it was like middle school, that's when my parents really started to improve financially. And then that's when my mom started putting me into like tutoring sessions. I remember I used to go to this, this, this white lady and she would tutor me every Saturday, one-on-one reading, writing, comprehension, never forget it. So that was one point in my life. And then I went to this um, tutoring center for kids when I was very, very young and I hated it. I'm like, mom, why do I have to go here? I feel stupid. Now I, I used to tell her that all the time. I'm like, why do I, I feel so stupid? I, I, and you know, as a kid, kids would tease you for being dumb, slow, whatever. So I'm like, mom, I don't want to go to this learning center. And she was like, my mom, she was like, you have to go. And I'm like, well, why don't my brothers have to go? Why do I have to go? And she was like, you just have to go. So every Saturday, I would literally cry tears telling my mom, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to get teased like I'm stupid, like I'm slow. So she would take me anyway every Saturday. I would give I would give my mom hell. I had to apologize for her. I'm like, mom, thank you. Thank you for taking me. Thank you for caring. Thank you for you know, giving me this opportunity to improve myself when I really needed it. So she took me, um, E, what is it called? W E E B Du Bois was the learning center that I went to when I was like in fifth grade. Right here in Kansas City. I don't know who's on here. If you're from Kansas City, that's where she took me. Every Saturday. Didn't want to go. Because I did not want to get teased for being slow. But she didn't know that. My mom just thought, oh, you're being lazy. You don't want to, you don't want to learn. And it wasn't that. It was that every time I would go, I would get teased for being stupid. I would get teased. So I'm like, I don't want to go. I went. Every Saturday up until I was probably, um, I would say seventh or eighth grade, somewhere in there. So then um, after, after, when I got to middle school, I started to improve really, really well. And by the time I made it to high school, I didn't even need any extra assistance because the school that I went to used to get extra assistance. Like you could, I still went to reading class. I still had to go to reading class. I had to do reading class in high school. But by that time I had improved so much. And it's because my mom really got me the help that I needed. And my issue wasn't that I was stupid and couldn't learn the information. It was the fact that I was the kid that would daydream. I was a daydreamer. So if I'm in a classroom, we're reading out loud. We're, the whole classroom is reading out loud. I'm not paying attention. I'm daydreaming. I'm thinking about the moon, the stars, the suns, and everything in between. Yes. Oh, my God. Miss Manny is on here. Oh, my gosh. That is so funny. Oh, my gosh. Let me tell you about Miss Manny. Everyone knows Miss Manny did not play, okay? She was, some would say she was crazy. But she meant well. And most people that are labeled crazy, okay, yes, Lee Summit West, Miss Manny, she's in here right now. Most people call people who are very passionate about what they do crazy. Now, look, I'm crazy. But I'm sure students really remember her because she was just a very passionate person. So, it's just, it is what it is, you guys. Like, that's that's my story. Um, that's my truth. My daddy was crazy, too. The man was crazy. He was crazy. But he meant well. He meant well. I mean well. Even though sometimes I feel like I'm misunderstood, I mean well. I mean well. But people misunderstand me. Or a lot of the times, a lot of the times when it comes to my commentary, 
things that I speak, people don't want to put in the work. So they complain. Not my problem. So when I say all odds were against me, all, I wasn't even supposed to be good in basketball. That's another thing. I was not supposed to be good in basketball. I was not mean. I was slow. I was not supposed to be good in basketball. Not. The only reason why my daddy put me in basketball was because he didn't want me talking to boys. That was it. He didn't. I wasn't supposed to be good. I wasn't supposed to get no D1 scholarship. My brothers were. That's where the sexism comes in. My brothers were definitely supposed to go off to college. They were definitely supposed to get a D1 scholarship. But my parents had every intention to pay for me to go to school. Somehow, I got a D1. I got D1 offers, D1 scholarships. I'm actually performing in, in basketball to where I'm getting recruited. You never know what you can do when you actually apply work. So you're looking at a girl that's worked her way to where she is. I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep my way to where I am. I worked and I've been working since I was a kid. So for me to even be able to come on here and speak to you guys in the way that I do, I worked to get here. So when men complain, I just don't have any sympathy. I don't. I just don't. Because there were times where I wanted to cry. There were times where I wanted to give up. There were times where I wanted to quit. I just didn't give up. I didn't quit. And when you give up, when you quit, you're literally quitting on yourself. Because your parents, they're not going to be there when you become an adult. Your mama, your daddy, I mean, you be trying to get back at people. It's just like, no. It's just, I don't know. Hard work always pays off. Hard work always pays off. And then even with me drop, dropping out of college with the whole assault situation, my parents, um, my dad still to this day, he doesn't even know what happened. It's because I just don't have, I just don't have the heart to tell him what happened. Like it, it would just kill him. I told my brother, but I, I never told my dad. He just thinks I dropped out and just quit, but he doesn't understand what really happened. So it just, it really left me in a, a tough situation. The fact that I'm even able to speak out on this is still new to me, but therapy has helped me. My therapist has said, just speak your truth. It's all you have to do is just speak your truth. Stop hiding your truth. This is who you are. Here I am. For years, I never spoke on what happened. I just pretended like it never happened. So when men come on here and complain about performing, please get that out of here. Please. Did I feel like I had black women to look up to? That's a really good question. My mom, definitely. Very intelligent woman. Very smart. She's an accountant. Boss. I mean, when I visited her, I'll never forget when I went to her job when I was younger. Um, <laughs> she was just so, in, she was just smart. She was intelligent. She was a boss. You know what I mean? I don't know how else to explain it, but like, she really inspired me. She really did. She really inspired me. She really, really did. So um, for sure, my mom. But there were still things about my mom that I really didn't like. Um, I would say my aunt, but to a certain extent, because again, there were things that I saw that I didn't like. Um, I just felt like with every woman that I looked to for inspiration, there were things that I liked and then there, there were just things I didn't like. There were things I didn't like. I, and at the time I was, I was very big in the feminism movement to where there were just things that I did not like, but it was because I didn't really understand. So I would use things that I saw in women that I looked up to I would take them. I'm like, oh, okay, I can use that. I can use this. I can use that. Oh, I can use that, that, that. I'm going to take all these things that I feel like are for me, use them for me. And then the rest, 
I'm going to just ignore that. So that's what I do. That's why when it comes to my platform, I support all black women. I don't care. Queer. You want to divest. You want to squirrel. Um, sexually fluid non-binary girl you got my support i even i have a non-binary black girlfriend phenomenal woman creative as hell i don't care about that stuff those are labels that society gives you to make you feel some kind of way and i don't care about the labels i care about your character if are you a good person if you're a good person i don't care about the rest that, that's not my business. And what you do in your spare time, it really is not my business. Are you a good person? Do you have a good character? Are your intentions good? If your intentions are good, they're not harmful. I'm not about to fight with you. And that's the thing. Nowadays, people feel like they got to put you in a category, especially in Afro-American sphere, I call it. And here in the U.S., if they can't put you in a category, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. They're like, oh, we don't know what to do with her. We don't know what to do with her. Where do we put her? We got to put her somewhere. We got to put her somewhere. She's a swirler. She's not a swirler. Oh, my God. Okay. She's a queer. She's not queer. Oh, my gosh. She's not queer. Oh, my gosh. Where do we put her? She's not a male basher. Oh, my gosh. Where do we put her? Where do we put her? We got to put her somewhere. I'm a free, listen, I am a free bird. You cannot put me in a cage. Because at that point, as soon as you put me in that cage, I'm not free anymore. I believe in freedom. I don't need to take on a label. I don't need a label. I'm free. I'm a free thinker. I live my life freely. I don't live according to other people. It's simple. You don't need to put a label on me. I hate that. I do me. I support what I support. I like what I like. And that's it. I don't. What? What is that? What is a label? I'm not even liberal or conservative. I don't, I don't, you know, I it's it's like I use certain terms in my videos so people can have an idea of who I am. But I, I'm not even that. Tomorrow I may wake up and do something that's not conservative. <laughs> you know, I may, depending on my day, if I want to. Oh, I just love how y'all be deleting comments. Thank you, Holland. Listen. I'm going to have to take care of my moderators on here. I'm going to have to send y'all a wig, something, do something special for y'all. Y'all be keeping that bad energy off my stuff, and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, they are on it tonight. I was like, dang, what did that say? I missed it. Okay, Holland, thank you, girl. I'm going to have to do something special for y'all. Please protect my energy. Okay, thank you. I'm milling a wig out tonight. Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm milling out a wig. Tomorrow. But I owe th I owe this girl a wig. Listen, I'm a giver. That's what I do. You take care of me. I'm gonna take care of you. That's how I live my life. Okay. Shout out to the shout out to the mods out here, girl. You're doing the Lord's work. Okay. They are not playing. They said delete. <laughs> but that's me. Because, I listen, I hate arguing with people. One, one thing that I hate doing is arguing. I, I feel like it doesn't solve anything. I just, if m me personally, if there's not a solution at the end of the tunnel, I, I don't want to talk about it. I, if there's no solution, why are we talking about it? Why Why are you raising my blood pressure? Okay. Now you know we live in a foreign land. You can't be running you can't be messing up my blood pressure because you know, can't trust the the big farm. You can't trust their medications. You can't trust their food. Please don't don't raise my blood pressure. Okay. 
Y'all see, you're not about to mess with my energy. Not tonight. This is another thing. Black women, I need y'all to get in this energy where you just don't allow people to mess with your energy. Be happy. It's so funny because I be pissing people off with my smile. Can you believe that? I want to be known for my smile. I want to be known for my happy-go-lucky spirit. When I leave this earth, that's what I want to be known for. Okay? I refuse to be bitter. This world is not going to make me an angry woman, period. I'm, I, don't, I don't like to argue. I'm going to have a marriage. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to have a marriage. We don't argue. We go our separate ways. We go do something that makes us happy. And then we come back and then we talk about it. <laughs> That's the type of marriage. I, listen, I'm so serious. We get into a disagreement, not an argument. We get into a disagreement. He's upset. I'm upset. I'm going to go do something fun, like paint, listen to some music, garden. I don't know. He go do what he want to do in his man cave, whatever, right? We cool off, we come back, we sit down, we have a conversation. That's it. That arguing, I don't like that. Wait, when you are a light in this world, people will do their best to try and take it from you. Yeah, because they're unhappy. Yeah. I don't know. I just keep getting happier and I don't know why. I think it's, this is another thing. I feel like we create our happiness. So create your happiness. Create it. Stop listening to these men on the internet, okay? Because half the things they be saying don't apply to real life. And the type of commentary that I give, you can apply it to real life. <laughs> we, can, we can sing Kumbaya, but at the end of the day, my commentary, you can apply it and you should apply it to real life. What good advice would you give to a young black woman? Straight off the bat, experiment. Get out here and experiment. Different cultures, different music, even different religions. Um, did I say music? Different music, hobbies, movies. Watch different movies in different languages. Just step outside of your comfort zone. Experiment. Enjoy your youth. Enjoy your 20s. Don't feel like you got to have it all together. Vet friends. That's a good one. That's a good one. Also, stop feeling like you got to hold on to people just because y'all grew up together. Let that go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Korean dramas are so good. That. Travel the world. See as much as you can, okay? Make, listen, that's another thing. Put them in last, okay? They come last. If you can fit them into your schedule, fit them in. But if you can't, don't. And even if you do, experiment with men, different races. Now, it doesn't always mean that you have to experiment sexually. You just engage with them socially. Experiment with different men, white men, Asian men, Hispanic White, whatever. African, black. Spread your wings. You are not a caged bird. I say this all the time. Spread your wings. Oh, there was this Chinese movie that I was watching. It was so good. I can't even think of the name right now. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But there was like an outbreak that happened. And I can't even think of the name. I can't, I can't even think of the name, but it was good. It was good, girl. It was good. It was good. Hold on. Let me respond to my friend so she knows.
Okay. Um, what else do you guys want to talk about? Oh my gosh, Parasite. <gasps> That's what that was the name of the movie. It was gut. Was it contagion? Was it contagion? No, contagion. I don't think it was that. I think it was, I definitely feel like it was Parasite. I think that was the name. Oh, I haven't gotten into Brit British TV shows. I should probably get into that next. But yes, just experiment. Oh, and also cook different meals. Cook different meals. Y'all making me want to watch some stuff. Okay, Parasite is a Korean movie. I'm sorry. Y'all know y'all, you, you know... This is another thing that I learned about Asian people. They hate it when you mix them up with other Asians. Oh, my God. They like, girl, you better get it right. <laughs> I'm like, no, Parasite is the name. Then maybe that wasn't the name. I don't even remember. Paint. Paint, paint, paint. Yes, that's another one. At Ashes of Love. I'm going to have to look into that one. Yes, but basically, yeah, okay, maybe I didn't see that one. I need to know that. I need to get my life. There was one movie that uh, where Letty from um, from Fast and Furious. There was a movie that she played in, and it was just a little too weird for me. I had to stop watching it. I don't even know what it was, but it was just a little too weird. I don't know what it was, but it was just too weird. I said, I, this is just too much. Yeah, Chad Wheeler. Journey. I get that so much. Journey Smollett. Ooh, The Kingdom. Oh, she said that's her show, girl. When you say that's my show, that just that's different. What else do you guys want to talk about? Give me some topics. I'm gonna try to be on here until one an hour and thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, she was playing a man or, or a trans, and I was just so confused because I'm just like. It, the thing that was confusing was, it was just like, if she is playing a trans woman, why not give this role to a trans woman? So I'm just confused. I'm like, is she pretending to be a, a man? Is she pretending to be a woman? I, it was just confusing. So it was just a lot. She said, Bridgerton, girl, it's okay. Definitely. The only reason why I was watching was because of the courtship. That's the only reason I watched that. I'm like, let me see how it was back then. If it wasn't for that, I would have stopped watching Bridgerton is toxic as hell. Can we talk about the trauma? Did you see how the trauma affected his life? This is why you guys need to heal. <laughs> I'm going to say that in every live. You need to heal. Have you done your work? Did you do your work today? Also, music. Let me talk about this. Music can help you heal music and help you not not that rap stuff y'all be listening to you need to change your frequency you're not listening to the right frequency music can help you heal i don't know who needs to heal, hear this so if you cannot afford therapy get into some jazz get into some classical music get into house music but chill house music it can help you heal so if you need some healing you can use music to do that. I don't know who needs to hear that. If you cannot afford therapy, use music. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Throat baby? I can't. That ain't for me. I, I, I look at throat baby the way that I look at WAP. And then when I saw the, the visual, I just was not here for it. But you know what's funny though? People wanted to be so upset about WAP, but then give Throat Baby a pass. I wonder why. 
Hmm. Interesting. Till this day, I haven't even heard the, the song Throat Baby. I don't even know what who and who who made the song. I don't even know who it's by. I don't be listening to mainstream. I'll be in my old school stuff. I'll be listening to soul. Last night, let me tell you what I was. I was listening to Afro Chill. I was listening to house music, but um, Afro Soul Mix. I was listening to uh, Afro House Music, Jazz. I even got into some Chakra Healing Music. Y'all be listening to mainstream. I don't like mainstream music. I like listening to small artists that are trying to get a come up. They just be different. They be passionate about their stuff. Then when they go mainstream, I kind of just fall off because I don't like it after that. When people start getting hit to them, I don't I don't like it after that. I like I like my I like my artists not to be known. <laughs> Cause as soon as as soon as the ooh Lion Bay, oh my God, she is my girl. Hey, I love her. I don't want her to blow up, even though I feel like she is. I don't want her to blow up. I don't want her to blow up. Cause I feel like as soon as she blows up, they're gonna start targeting her to make mainstream music, and I hate that. I hate mainstream music. It's repetitive. Aren't y'all tired of listening to the same stuff? Anybody else tired of listening to this? It's, the st it's literally the same sound, different rapper. Y'all tired of that? So I always be trying to look for the newest, hottest, young artist that's out here. Tired of it. That, it's so repetitive. I, I can't remember the last time I listened to the radio. Couldn't be me. Hey, Patricia, thank you for the $2. Any tips on making new friends as an adult? Oh, I kind of talked about this in my last live, but honestly, I feel like you need to join a organization. You need to join an organization. You need to join a some type of club. It could be a book club. It could be, I don't know if you are a college student, but maybe you can join like some type of club on campus. Um, also there was, oh, this, this is app called meetup. You can also join a club on there, depending on your city, depending on if you have certain meetup groups in your city, use the meetup app. Bumble BFF is another one. Also link up with girls on Instagram. I do it all the time. All my friends that y'all be seeing besides Marquita. I met off Instagram. <laughs> Good friends, too. We've been friends for a long time. A, a long time. So, yeah. Um, besides my best friends that live in different cities, I meet a lot of my friends off Instagram. So, hey, how you doing? Yeah, meetup, tr meetups are really, really good. Because, basically, meetups are... Everyone is coming here to meet people, to meet friends, to connect, socialize. So it's a really good app. Also, I hate to say it, this is something that I'm considering when I move out of state. I plan on moving out of state very soon. I plan on getting a job. Now, not a nine to five full-time job, just like a little, just like some type of job. Like I wouldn't mind being a bartender. I could see myself being a bartender. But I would like bartend in a new city, meet some new people, probably do that for like six months to a year, quit, <laughs> socialize, meet people as a bartender part-time. I'm good. I haven't decided. I haven't. I'm I'm not telling y'all which what state. I know what state I'm moving to, but I ain't, I'm not telling nobody until I at least put a deposit down on an apartment, which I have not done yet. Now I have, I have turned in my papers to 
my leasing office to tell them that I'm not going to be staying. So I just need my best friend to look at this apartment. If she checks out this apartment, was she supposed to go look at it this Thursday? If she checks out the apartment on Thursday, then I'm going to tell y'all where I'm moving to. Because I'm going to call them, put a down payment, put a deposit, whatever I need to do on the place. Which I already feel like it's mine because Spirit has sent me signs that this is where I'm moving. Um, then cool. I just got to make sure it's on lock lock though. So I can't tell y'all where that's set yet. I don't want to tell y'all yet. I don't want nobody working against me right now. <laughs> Thank you, Leah. So at this point, basically Yanni is homeless because, listen, I took a risk. I'm like, because I love this place that I'm in. I love it. I just don't like Kansas. I don't like Kansas City. No shade to Kansas City. It's just I've outgrown it. I've outgrown Kansas City and I need somewhere to go where I can like really spread my wings. So to be continued. Yes, a high end bar. Oh my God. And I can socialize and network. Perfect. Perfect. So that's what I plan on doing. If I do move, I will be working part-time as a bartender to meet people, to get out the house. And so don't be surprised if you meet me out in these streets, okay? One of your sisters, she lives in Lee Summit. It's just too small. It's, I've outgrown Kansas City. I love my family to death, but it's like I have outgrown it. Don't I? Did I say this on here or... Was it other live? But like the reason why I was staying here and I've been staying here for so long is because the last time I left Kansas City, I was sexually assaulted. You no, know, I mean I do smoke a little something, something, but I'm just burning some. <laughs> so the last time I left, I was sexually assaulted. So it it, it kept me bound here. Um, under comfortability. So I, I didn't want to leave. It's going to kill me though, if I don't have my family support because I'm, I don't know. It's just a lot. She said, Kansas City so small. It is. It's not, it, it's no, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like I need to get out and just spread my wings. So, yes, she said, move away from KC, moved away from KC, not looking back. Thank you so much because, girl, I'm not getting the best support, but it's kind of expected. So, whatever. Family support is definitely important, but if I don't get it, it's okay. Like, they didn't support me with YouTube, so I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> I'm a rebel. That's another thing. In my family, I'm a rebel. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's why y'all be letting these men on here get to y'all. I don't get it because my family don't even be getting to me. <laughs> and I put my family in high regards. Y'all be letting these little men that be living in their mama's basement get to y'all. I don't get that. I don't get that. My own family don't be with the program that I be on. So I'm going to still go and do me, though. Ain't nobody going to hold me back from doing what I want to do. Period. I don't care who you are. Oh, this is another thing. This is another thing. Can we talk about this? Women. I don't care if you are a part of the swirler com community. You're part of the divester community. You're part of the queer community. Uh, heterosexual, whatever, girl, black men, whatever. You never put your significant other or people that you're interested in romantically above yourself. You know why? That's low self-esteem. When you, listen, it's science. It's science. Okay? This is, this is you. This is your significant other. You're putting them higher than yourself. Uh, 
excuse me, why are we doing that? That's low self-esteem. You don't do that. Okay. Uh-uh. No, you don't do that. It's, it's either here or it's nothing. Okay. When you put your significant other above yourself, that is low self-esteem. It's low self-esteem. You're putting yourself lower than them. And you should never do that. Ever. You should never do that. You always put yourself. You come first. And that's the thing. It's like people are, they feel weird when they say, oh, I come first. This goes for men too. If there's men tuning in. If there's men tuning, tuning in. Yes, it's codependency. So it doesn't even matter. Like as people, you don't put someone above yourself, not even your own mother, father, brother, significant. It don't even matter. Not even family. You come first. You got to make sure you're good so that you can be there for other people. If you're not good. Girl, what's going on? I'm going to have to sit down and <laughs> We're going to have to have a mentor conversation. Like, what's so what's going on with you? What's, is everything okay? Why are you out here putting people above yourself? It, yes, it's a form of desperation. It's, it's like you fear. You fear putting yourself first. And it's like, I have to ask you, why? Why do you fear that? I don't praise men. We don't do that. That's low self-esteem. That's low self-esteem. That's low self-esteem. You can love your mama, but you still don't put her above yourself. That's not self-love. That's low self-esteem. Listen, you can either take my advice or pay $150. <laughs> you can take my advice or pay $150 for my information. <laughs> Because if you go to that therapist, she's going to tell you the same thing, sis. And then we're going to be sitting here looking at each other like, you know what? Y'all even was right. I, listen, I paid the 150 You don't have to pay the 150 I'm telling you what it is. You put somebody above yourself, that's low self-esteem. Period. That's why I cringe when I see black women out here praising white men, black men. And, you know, the funny thing about this app. And I have to say this app, the one that I'm currently on, if I was on Instagram, Twitter, whatever, these apps that we be talking about, uh, y'all be praising, y'all call, listen, y'all call black, black women who praise or stand up for black men as pygmishas, right? That's what y'all label them. Y'all label them that. At this point, pygmishas. Y'all got my support too, because I used to be a pygmisha. You just haven't gone through enough experiences for you to get to that point to where you just be like, okay, I'm not a pygmisha no more. So you still got my support. You still got my love. Eventually you're going to come around. Okay. Um, but black women call black women who praise black men pick Misha's, but y'all don't call black women who praise white men pick Misha's. I just want to know why. Because you, both of them are desperate. Both of them. You shouldn't praise no man. Period. You never praise a man. Because when you do, you don't know your worth. Soon as you start praising them, you don't know your worth as a woman, period. You don't know your worth. Black women be so quick to call a black woman that stands for black men a pick Misha, but y'all don't call black women who stand for white men pick Misha's. They all the same to me. They all the same to me. You're praising someone outside of yourself. They all the same. You a pick Misha. You show sure are. You are because you want to be picked by a white man. Just because you change in races don't mean shit to me. You want to be picked by a white man. 
That's pygmesia. When you a woman and you know your worth, you understand men come to you. You don't go to them. They come to you. They come to you on a bended knee. You don't go to them on a bended knee. You get what I'm saying? I want black women to raise their uh, self-esteem. She said, I pick Misha me. Okay, Marissa, let them know, sis. You don't bow down to no man. I don't care who he is. White, black, Hispanic, Asian. You a woman. You don't bow down to no man. So y'all be out here calling uh, black women who be standing for black men pick Misha's. Listen, y'all, any woman out here bowing down to a man, you would pick Misha to me. I don't care what race he is. I keep the same energy. I don't switch up. You the prize. You the prize. He ain't the prize. You the prize. So what you doing bowing down and what, you, what, what we doing? We not doing that. It's low self-esteem. Get off your knees. Get off your knees. You the only one that should be standing. He should be on a bended knee. I, 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 don't, I don't understand it. I don't get I, I be trying to, I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. We call in Pikmishas to black women that stand for black men, but we don't call Pikmishas to black women who stand for white men. Why? They the same. So we switch up when it comes to race. I don't do that. I hold black men accountable. Listen, they lazy. Collectively, lazy. Statistically, statistically lazy. I still said what I said. Y'all don't like it. And then is black women always be attacked. I'm like, listen, I, I keep the same energy. I don't know what you guys want from me. A man is a man. At the end of the day, a man is a man. Stop praising them, okay? They got they got some penis. That's cool. Stop praising them. You're not desperate. And as a black woman, you should know you a queen. People should be coming to you on a bended knee, not you going to them begging them. But again, I said, pick Misha's on both sides, black, white, whoever you caping for out here in these streets as a woman, pick Misha. That's what you are. Low self-esteem. So stop praising men. You should be praising yourself. I told y'all that. Stop praising these men. Praise yourself. Put yourself on a pedestal. Do the work. Put yourself on a pedestal. It's simple. And then providing is is bare minimum. I don't get it. <laughs> Girl, the wine is hitting though. It, it really is. I'll be holding back. I'll be because I'll be like the internet ain't ready for me and my 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 thought process. I just be like, that's the thing though. I don't look at race and I don't look at gender. I look at patterns. Patterns, people. If you, listen, if you was out here praising black men, why the hell would you go and turn around and praise a non-black man? That don't make no sense to me. Why would you do that? You didn't learn from praising black men and then you think you're not going to run into the same issue with a non-black man? They men at the end of the day. Race is man-made, sis. Get in tune. Race is man-made. These men all came from us as a black woman. We created them. And you're going to turn around and praise them. That's insane to me. That, that is, they men. Race is man-made. Race is man-made. It's not real. It's man-made, sis. So if you go around praising a white man, please understand what you're doing. Playing yourself. You're playing yourself. Good luck. Men are men, period. You playing yourself. So I, I just think that's funny. I ain't praising no man. I don't care what race you are, period. I'm not praising no man. They all think the same. You put them on a pedestal, they start slacking. You put them on a pedestal, they lazy. You put them on a pedestal, they stop buying you flowers. 
why you stop buying me flowers? I, <laughs> I I like flowers. I really like how they make me feel. You stop buying me flowers? Why you stop buying me flowers? Because you started praising them for it. What advice, wait, what advice do you have for a person who wants to date, but your parents don't want you to, as in they want you so, they want you to get engaged immediately? Oof, girl, why are you putting me in a hot seat? Um, <laughs> listen, okay, two things. You can only go against your parents' wishes when you don't live under their roof. So if you live under their roof, my advice means that you don't live under their roof no more. Get what I'm saying? Okay. So with me saying that, if that's not the life that you want to live, if you don't want to get engaged immediately, then you need to leave. If you've left, you live by your own rules. You do as you want. You do as you please. That's how you live your life. You do what makes you happy. You're in control of who you are and what you do. So if your parents want you to do something that you're not comfortable with, well, you may need to grow up. You may need to move out. Now, if you're underage, that's not going to happen. Also, in these streets, it's ruthless. It's ruthless. So if it means that you can't date under their roof until you get your life together, well, I guess you're just going to have to wait. I had to wait. Listen, I'm a late bloomer. It's okay. Do what you got to do. But don't be doing nothing that they're not for under their roof. That's the best advice that I could give you. Okay. But no, don't be rushing to get in a relationship if you know you're not ready for that. Because at the end of the day, yeah, your parents are your parents. They are wanting the best for you. That is true. Even though you don't agree with it. Even though you don't agree. Hell, I don't even agree. But... Do what's best for you. But sometimes doing what's best for you means not doing it under their roof. So you need to pick and choose. You need to pick your poison. If you live at home, I would just try to tough it out. I ain't going to lie. But you know what? You know what? I, I can't. I, listen, let me tell you what I did. I moved out. I got my own place. You're looking at a girl that went from living in the suburbs to living in a hood. I went from living in a safe neighborhood to living in a neighborhood where the apartment complex that I lived in, double homicide. First week I moved in. I said, double, double homicide. A rat came crawling out of my fireplace the first week I moved in. Listen. Goodwill. Goodwill. That's my store still to this day. <laughs> I love me some Goodwill. So I went to uh, Goodwill and I got these $5 chairs. So when I moved into my apartment, I think I paid like $600 in rent. It was cheap, girl. That's what I could afford. And this rat came flying out of my fireplace. I hopped on this $5 chair so fast. I said, oh, I'm not in the suburbs anymore. I'm like really out here living in, in some things I'm not used to. The next day, I called my brother. I'm like, I, I can't do this. <laughs> and you know, I was sounding so bratty, so bougie, so sadiddy. I'm calling him. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't. I just can't. This is just much i can't do this like this is just too much i didn't sign up for this i'm moving back in with our parents he said he lived in florida at the time this man going through it he going through it listen this man got roaches <laughs> this man living with roaches i got it easy i got i'm a, i got a rat he got roaches Woo, girl thank god i never had to deal with roaches thank you god thank you god for sparing me okay he was dealing with roaches. I was dealing with rats. We both grew up in the suburbs. So there's that, right? He told me, he's like, you think you're the only one that's out here struggling? He was like, you think you're the only one that don't got no furniture? Because I was just complaining. I was acting real sadiddy. Now my brother, he's older than me. So he just like, I already done been through this. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we doing here? 
He was like, you need to suck up. He was like, what you need to do is call the apartment people. This is my first apartment. He said, you need to call the apartment people. You need to let them know, hey, I need you to come board up my fireplace. <coughs> so the next day, maintenance comes out, boards up my my apartment place. I finally get my furniture, which took months of me saving, working overtime. I think I worked like 17 to 20 hours of overtime plus my normal 40 hours a week in order to get this furniture. Listen, it is what it is. So think long, hard before you think. The grass is greener on the other side when you move out. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to just call you peach, girl. So when you start praising a man, they start to feel like they don't have to earn, girl. <laughs> they start to feel like they don't have to earn your respect, love, and trust. Girl, women who get tattoos. Now, y'all know I don't judge, but the truth is this. When you get that tattoo, you know what that says? I'm here forever. I'm a ride or die. I'm going to be here till the wheels fall off. You can put me through hell. I'm going to stay. Good luck with that, sis. Because I'm the type. I'm out. You do something stupid. I'm out. Peace. This was cool. Enjoyed it. Had fun. Gotta go. Gotta run. I, I can't. So, that girls that be out here getting tattoos and stuff, you are telling this man you are here forever. That's why you don't get name tattoos. You don't do that. Because as soon as you do, this man gonna get lazy. That's how they are. Soon as you do. Soon as you get that tattoo, soon as you get that tattoo, that man is going to get lazy. I don't care what race he is. He already know. You not leaving? Another thing. You have his baby? Lazy. Got her. She ain't going nowhere. She having my baby. No ring? She having my baby. She stuck. So now you stuck. That's what that is. That's what that is. And then to the girls that be out here, yeah, I, I'm gonna be here for you. I'm gonna be your ride or die. Yanni don't be saying no dumb stuff like that. I'm sorry, I don't say dumb stuff like that. You do something stupid, I'm out. I didn't sign up for this. You do something dumb, you go to jail, I'm out. I'm not riding or dying. Not I'm not. I didn't sign up to do jail time. You sign up to do jail time? I didn't sign up to do jail time. I didn't sign up to do jail time. So, um, and then listen, these men be talking about, yeah, I want you to have my baby. I want you to have my baby. I don't see no ring on this finger. Ain't that something else? I, you want me to have your, I don't see no ring on this finger. I, I don't see no house. I, I don't see no, I don't see no house. I don't see no 401k plan. I don't see no savings account. I don't I don't see no pension. I don't <laughs> I don't see nothing. You see something? I don't see nothing. That's crazy. Mm. Couldn't be me. I want you to have my baby. Girls be going for that? Mm -mm. Words mean nothing. Words mean nothing. My moderators are rude. No, they doing their job. <laughs> what you saying? Dang. Right, where's my house? Listen, back in the day, my grandma, she was she was having a baby. She had a house. She had a house. She had a savings. She had a 401k plan. She had a 401k plan. She she just wasn't popping out a baby just to pop out one just because a man said, oh, um, oh, he, he wants me to have his baby. Y'all be going for that? Don't be going for that. It's weak. They need to work a little harder for that. 
they want you to really have yo they really want you to have a baby they'll marry you they'll buy you a house maybe even a brand new car put you up in a good neighborhood with good schools a good school district good school district where your kid can actually make something of themselves but just to go off a man's word i want you to have my baby that ain't enough that ain't enough that's not enough it's not enough i need a house i need a, a house in a good neighborhood not no pillow talk because you trying to get some that ain't enough for me not for me sorry Because I'm not about, listen, I'm not about to raise stupid kids. They need to be in a good community where they can go to a good school and have a good education. That's what I be thinking about. That's your job as a woman, to think about things like that. The type of school your kids are going to go to. Don't be waiting until you get pregnant. Do it before. If you know this man is not in any position to put you in a neighborhood with a school, a good school district, you don't need to be having his baby. The hell you having this baby for? I want you to have my baby. Uh, where's my house? Where's my good neighborhood? Where's my car? Safe car that I can drive. Where is that at? You can't have no I what baby? Baby my ass. So y'all need to be thinking about that. Don't let these men get in y'all's head. Y'all be pillow talking. I know how it is. I know how it is. You know, he got that good nut and y'all sitting there having a conversation and, you know, things are real intimate and all that stuff. And he telling you sweet nothings, sweet nothings. They mean nothing. That's what it means. And you getting all caught up, you in the moment, because, you know, he done blew your back out, and you really think it means something. Means nothing. Words mean nothing. they just words. Let me see some actions. Let me see some actions. Buying me, in buying me a house, putting me in a good neighborhood. Girl, pillow talk is dangerous. Let's talk about pillow talk. I'm going to use the uh, Insecure show. I don't know. Who, who's on here that's watched Insecure? Who's on here that's watched Insecure? If you watch Insecure, let's talk about Molly. This is a woman that was in a uh, open marriage type relationship, right? Sis, why are you up here having pillow talks and intimate connections with a married man? I mean, they, listen, let me pull up the video. Y'all want me to see the video? Because y'all know I keep my receipt, honey. Why are you up here having intimate uh, conversations and relations with a married man and you know that situation is supposed to be casual? Which, to me, they haven't really implied it, but I don't really think his wife really knows. Listen. Well, they in the bed. He holding her hand. Do you see that? Girl. Uh-uh. This you don't do that. You don't you don't do that. You you don't do that. Women catch feelings with pillow talk. And when men have pillow talk, they lie. They hide off a nut. They're going to tell you whatever you want to hear, girl. You you want me to buy you a house? You want me to buy you a Benz? You want me to buy you what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because I'm high off this nut. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do and not do nothing. Actions speak louder than words. Y'all y'all know the saying? They're going to tell you whatever you want to hear, whatever you need to hear, because they high off that nut. It's called post nut high. That's what it's called. You don't believe nothing a man says after he nuts. You don't. This is this is the type of information you're not going to get from your mama. Your mama ain't going to tell you this because she's a conservative and she feels, oh, I can't have that type of conversation with my daughter. Not all moms, but, you know, majority. Oh, I can't have that conversation with my daughter. 
I'm here to tell you, sis, post nut, that conversation goes in one ear, out the other. Goes in one ear, out the other. It, it, he said what? Oh, I didn't even hear that. I don't even know what he said. Oh, girl, he ain't talking about that. <laughs> okay. I had to learn that on my own. My mama didn't tell me. Some mamas will. Some mamas are very hip out here in these streets, and I appreciate them. My mama, she just wasn't hip. She just wasn't. So I had to learn this. A man tell you something post nut, let that go, girl. You hold on to that for what? He didn't mean any of that, what he said. He's high off the nut. Real life. Post nut, before sex, when he trying to get some, all of that. That space right there, never take a man serious. Especially if he's speaking. Don't take him serious. Shoot, when a man is in that energy, he feel like he can run for president. You don't do that. Don't play yourself like that. I'm going to save this live because people need to understand. Post-nut conversations don't mean anything. They go in one ear and out the other. Now, if you marry, you can hold that man to that standard. That's a totally different conversation. Marriage, different. Marriage is different. You can hold that man accountable because he's your husband. But a little boyfriend, um, I don't know. No. If he ain't your husband, you can't hold him to that standard. Now, if you marry, <laughs> girl, try to get a new car. <laughs> you know, like, try, try to get you a new handbag, a new wardrobe. Um, try to get you something. I don't know. Like, get you get you something out of it. That's your husband, girl. You better get you a little... A, some money, I don't know, girl, but you need to get you something. That's your husband. You know, you you it's a little that's a different little ball game that you're dealing with right there. You can get you a new car, a new headbag. I'll be something. Okay. But these little boyfriends, one ear out the other. That's all I that's all I hear. And if you slipped up, you're dealing with your baby daddy and he giving you pillow talk, one ear out the other. You know he ain't shit. Yeah, cop that Chanel bag. Whatever you want. It's yours. When he nuts. Every girl should know that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. What else should I talk about since I'm on here? I hope my family don't be watching this. <laughs> but if they do, what the hell? They need to learn too. Um, there was... Yeah, my brother, yeah, he was calling me because of that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She better be a freak. <gasps> oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay, since we on this conversation of pillow talk, listen, let me tell you something. I posted this to my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should follow me on Instagram. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty funny. But, I mean, if you don't think I'm funny, whatever, cool. Um, I think I'm funny. So, y'all know I got a yoni steam. I'm I'm on my menstrual cycle right now, and I'm just like, what did I do? So I got a yoni steam, and this yoni steam, it, it 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 got some weird side effects. Side effects that I wasn't expecting. Side effects that I didn't know I was really sign up, signing up for. Everybody keep talking about, um. <clears throat> oh, when you get a yoni steam, you're so much more wet. Oh, my God, I get so wet now. I'm like, really? Interesting. Maybe I haven't gotten to that point yet, but my menstrual cycle came probably like two weeks after I did the yoni steam, and I'm just like, wow. Wow, that's crazy. This yoni steam is insane. It's just... It's pulling some, some stuff out of my, you know. So, <laughs> since we on this pillow talk situation, okay, I don't know why, but like on my Instagram, I'm about to put it in my Amazon store too. I'm going to put it in my Amazon store. But, uh, y'all don't be using toddler 
wet pads when y'all intimate. So you tell me, you you. This is what I'm hearing because people are like, "Why would you use the pads?" I'm like, "You use the pads because you get wet during intercourse or you know during intimacy." And people are like, "That's why you get the." That's why you get the toddler potty training pads. So what they are, are they're like the little. Hold on, let me go back. Sorry, I'll be trying to, you know. Can you guys see them? I'm going to have to put them on my Amazon store. But they're like the toddler training pad that you get. So like when you're training a toddler they may like not get up. They may wait. They may wet the bed. <coughs> so you use the toddler painting, toddler painting, toddler pads. And it's like this mattress pad that you put on their bed. You can wash it. You can wash it and then you can put it back on their bed. But it, it, it really absorbs the moisture. It absorbs the water or the pee, whatever. So I posted it to my, it's waterproof. Thank you. It's like a waterproof pad, but it's like a mattress pad. No, 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 sweetie. A towel ain't going to work. That's why I mean, y'all don't be having good sexual experiences and they really be upsetting me and my homegirls. I'm like, a, a towel ain't going to work. You need these toddler pads. They're, they're potty training toddler pads and you lay them down it absorbs the water y'all be out here boosting these men's heads up and they not even giving you a good experience and that's what i don't understand you don't even gotta be a squirter even though every woman has the ability to do it it's just you got men out here who are lazy Men out here, y'all be praising for not doing anything, not even giving you an orgasm. It be upsetting me and my homegirls. So, um, no, you don't have to. So, y'all be letting these, listen, y'all be letting these men out here, um, Praising them over nothing. And I, like I said, it'd be upsetting me. This is why I, I told y'all, I told y'all, I said, when you downplay it, when you downplay it, they perform better. They perform better. We talked about this. We talked about this. When you downplay it, they perform better. They perform better. So I posted these these mattress pads. I posted these mattress pads pads to my Instagram, and people are like, "What do you use them for?" I said, "Girl, I know you lying. <laughs> I know you lying. What you mean? What do I use? This is y'all be out here boosting these man's heads up for nothing. For nothing. I just knew." People were going to put two and two together. No. I said, what? Every woman has the ability to squirt. Every woman has the ability to have an orgasm. This is ridiculous. And you shouldn't settle for anything less. That's what I'm saying. These men are so lazy. They don't got to work sexually for anything. I'm, they don't got to work a job. They don't got to work to get you to orgasm. They don't got to They don't gotta work to impress you. Y'all praise them for what? I, I just want to know. Every woman has the ability. Every woman has the ability. Don't let these misogynistic men tell you otherwise. Oh, you can't squirt. You can't. No, you can't make me squirt, sir. That's what that is. You can't make me squirt. It's you. It's not me. <laughs> Maybe you need to perform better. Maybe I would. It's like a mattress cover, but it's like it's like a pad, you guys. It's, it's like a pad that you lay down. It's for toddlers, and it absorbs 
moisture. And so it doesn't leave your mattress wet because I don't like laying in a wet spot. It's cold. It's cold as hell. It's cold. So if you're not squirting and having an orgasm, it's him. It's not you. He need to do his work. He ain't doing his job. Every woman has the ability to squirt. So if you're not making a woman squirt, you're not doing your job, period. <laughs> and if women were being honest, you would know that. But they're not being honest. By the way, listen, I promote masturbation because I feel like it could end the high statistics of out of wedlock births. So these are my vibrators. Now, the only reason why I got them next to me right now, because I know you're probably like, why does she, why she got these vibrators? Okay. Now, these men, okay, can be put out of business with these. Okay. Oh my God. Now, I know y'all probably like, why she got two? Okay. So, wait, is it this one? So this one, I, I tried to use it in the bathtub. In the motor, y'all see how it sound all raggedy? The motor went out. So, yeah. It said it was waterproof, but it ended up not being waterproof. So, this is why I'm abstinent. This one, you see how it sound? Strong, firm. Ooh, you hear that? That's why I had to get a new one. So... That's why I don't have no kids. This is why I don't have any kids. And this is why I've never had an abortion. Okay? Cool. Um, I And honestly, I went and got two. I got two of these. Two of these. So, yeah. Don't be surprised if in a few years I'm selling y'all a sex toy. It can help end this baby mama baby daddy pandemic. I don't know what this is, but it could really end it. Um, this is called evolved. This is the name. It's a bullet. You guys, this thing is only $20. This is, listen, I've been masturbating since I was a virgin. I don't know who needs to hear that too. All the virgins out here. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> Step into my office. Um, listen, I'll never forget, in college, I went to my first sex toy. Or no, sex party, not toy. Sex party. Got my first sex toys. And my roommate, she was the one that um, held it or whatever. And I used to get made fun of in college. I used to get made fun of for being a virgin in college because everyone else was out here just like, girl, this is the time for you to, use, for you to lose your virginity. And I'm like, I'm not trying to get pregnant. <laughs> so I got my first sex toy. And um, the first sex toy that I ever got, it was like a swirl, a tongue swirler. Um, and then <laughs> somebody said, y'all need to broke her vibrator. The water broke it. I didn't break it. The water, the tub broke it. Apparently, even though it says that it's waterproof, it's not. Okay. So... I only use bullets. I never use like the uh, dildos or anything like that. I never penetrated myself as a virgin. I think that's weird. I think that's very weird. But listen, if you do it, that's on you. That's not my business. Do what you want to do in your, your spare time. But this I use. It, this is clitoris. Clitoris. I'm sorry. Clitoris stimulation. Okay. So it penetrates the outside of your vagina. And when it does, it gives you an orgasm. Now, the beautiful thing about this right here, yes, small, handy, but it gets the work done, okay? The job, oh my God, girl. I mean, men, they be at it, they be going at it for like 30 minutes and then finally, you know, but this Girl, two, three minutes, ah! rolling over, sleeping like a baby. That's how it is with this little baby right here. This little thing right here. This is why size really does not matter. Um, this, 
is kind of on the shorter side. Um, but I mean, if you look at this size, it really does not matter. I mean, it just doesn't. Okay. You can have a eye rolling orgasm with this baby right here. You see how small it is? You can put this in your purse. I highly recommend that you use it before you go on a date, before you meet up with a guy and there's like a lot of sexual, you know, tension. You just want to release that sexual tension before you go on this date. So you're not out here giving up the goodies, okay? People really think I was lying when I said I was a virgin for years. Uh, so if there's a lot of sexual tension, you want to masturbate before. So then you can release that, okay? Mm -hmm. You guys have any questions? <laughs> Just don't use it in the tub because it don't work. <laughs> if it get wet, it don't, it's going to stop working. Okay? And stop praising these men. Stop praising. Now, listen. If you have to bring out a toddler pet, give him his... Give him, show some appreciation. But if you're not bringing out no toddler pad, stop praising these men for doing nothing. It's really making me upset. It's upsetting me and my homegirls, okay? Do I have a type? Yeah, you need to be about your stuff. You need to be about purpose. You need to be about, I do like it if you're about spirituality. I do like that. But, I mean, if you're religious, that's fine too. Um, my type. I mean, you got to have a good job. Good insurance. Please have good insurance. If you have good insurance, oh my God, you'll get some points for that. You sh yeah. Because as an entrepreneur, uh, I'll be out here struggling with that insurance. So if you, you got, you got some good insurance, step into my office. If you ain't got no job, you ain't got no good insurance. You don't got no 401k plan. Uh, no. Okay. Um, you don't have to squirt to have a good time or an orgasm. No, you don't. That's a fact. But to have the best, the best, which I feel all women should have the best, you do. You do. So if you can't get a woman, if you cannot get a woman to climax to that level, you need to work on yo. I don't know. You just need to work on it. <laughs> You need to, what's my favorite saying? You need to perform better. <laughs> oh my God. You need to perform better. You're not performing. Okay. We reward those that perform top level, not mediocre. So stop praising these men for not even performing mediocre. Some of y'all be praising these men that don't even be performing mediocre. I just be like, what are y'all, what are y'all doing? This ain't it. So, yeah. So, no. A woman can still have a decent sexual experience without, you know, clickerous stimulation or orgasm or G-spot, you know, experience. Yeah. But it's not the best, though. She deserves the best. Period. So, yeah. You need to perform better. I'm going to always say that. Men need to perform better. <laughs> Are you performing? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love that. Oh my god, I should get a shirt. Perform better. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So I just wanted to talk about that. So yeah, if if this man <clears throat> that you with, y'all not bringing out no pets, the toddler pets, don't be praising them, sis. Okay. Don't be cooking them no meals, sis. Give them a bottle of water. You can do that. Give him a bottle of water. But that's about it. That's all he needs. He don't need nothing else. Some water, he good. Yes. Um, yes, to the click roll stimulation. I don't feel in I don't feel any pleasure from penetration from fingers version. Okay. And that's fine. That's fine. You braver than me, because I never penetrated myself, even with fingers. I just used the clitoris, clitoral stimulation. I keep, I keep saying, this is what I use. That's it. 
So um, if there if there are any versions out here, there's nothing to be afraid of, sis. Touch yourself, love yourself. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> Don't and then that's another thing. Don't be letting these men touch you first because then you're gonna feel some type of attachment. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna feel like oh my god, I need him. No, you don't. You you got yourself in your toy. <laughs> so you got. It. So then when you do meet a guy, he do give you your first sexual experience. You're not gonna be like, oh my god, I'm attached. Because when I lost my virginity, I wasn't attached. It was because I masturbated regularly. I won't say on the hour, but I mean, I did. You know what I'm saying? So um, as a virgin, you need to touch yourself. I know Christians don't really agree. If your religion does not allow you to touch yourself, totally understandable. But for the ones that, you know, are free spirited, you know, go ahead, touch yourself. No judgment over here. Yeah, here's your water, but you're not getting no praise from me. You can get us some bottled water. And, and oh, this is another thing. Okay. If a man does not give you a hot cloth after you're intimate with him, ditch him. It could be friends with benefits. It could be, uh, I don't know, in a relationship. Let him go. A man should always give you a hot towel after sex, period. And if he's not, drop him. He's not considerate. That's not a gentleman. That's a, I don't know, a hoodlum. I don't know. What, he, what would we call him? I don't know. Drop him. He's not a gentleman an asshole he got what he wanted and he left you hanging that's what that means so if a man doesn't give you a hot towel and you can voice it you can voice it with him you can say hey can you get me a hot towel and he's like why do i need to give you a hot towel drop it the selfish is inconsiderate you are a lady get a hot towel Every man I've been intimate with, hot towel. Thank you. Cool. I don't play that. Hot towel. Y'all done, y'all done, listen, y'all done let these men get away with, come on. We are raising the bar. Hot towel. We, you make him get you a hot towel, sis. You deserve better. Hot towel. The hell, you better not get up. The only reason why you getting up is to pee. But you let him get that hot towel for you. You don't just let him just skip on off. And if there are any men on here, your daddy didn't teach you. You get a woman a hot towel after sex and a bottle of water. That's how I'm teaching my son. Even though I don't have no kids. But I'm saying, if I had kids, my son, hot towel and a bottle of water. Period. Condoms too. The hell? I don't get that. Hot towel. Okay. Somebody said for, okay, for what? Why do you need a hot towel? Because you need to get the fluids off of you. And also you need to clean your vagina. You also need to pee. And this is going to help you not contract any bacteria, any like... <sighs> The vagina is a very complicated organism, okay? <laughs> it's very complicated. So if he was in there and he was doing what he was doing and he did a good job, you need to clean yourself. You can't just go to sleep. You need to clean yourself. You need to pee. You need to hydrate yourself. You need to drink water. Yes, you don't want a UTI. You don't want an STI. So you just want to get a hot tub. That's what I'm saying. A man should always offer a hot towel after sex, period. Because again, the vagina is such a complicated organism to where if he just left you there hanging, he don't really care about you like that. He don't care about your pH balance. He don't care about if you get a UTI. He don't care if you get a, S a STI. He don't care if you get BB. That is a man you should not be giving your poom poom to. <laughs> 
Casual or not, that's a man you shouldn't be giving your poom poom to. I've had men wipe me clean. Exactly. I've had I've had men wipe me clean. No, peeing after sex does not prevent you from getting a STD or SCI. I don't I don't think I said that. I don't I don't think I said that, but I don't you no. But it does it does help limit. You get what I'm saying? Like it brings the percentage down, but it doesn't prevent. If that makes sense. So it goes from, ooh, you're at a 90% chance of getting an STI or UTI or whatever. But when you wipe yourself with a hot towel, it kind of brings it down a little bit. After sex, use the shower as simple as that. Yeah, you can use the shower. But I mean, if he was really putting in that work, you too tired to be using some shower. Hot towel, sis. Hot towel. Um, and then also, uh, I know relationships, girls be allowing men to not use condoms. Listen, if you don't use a condom, you're signing up to have a baby. I don't know who needs to hear that. Men, women, when you don't use a condom, you're signing up to not have a baby. I don't care if she on birth control or not. Birth control is not a hundred percent effective. So if you're not using a condom, you want to have a baby. Point blank, period. No in between, no nothing. No nothing. So I, men be acting all surprised. I, I don't get that. Yeah, make sure his fingers are clean. Oh my God. Please do. But I mean, you should have checked that out when you met him. <laughs> Listen, when I meet men for the first time, I'm looking at the fingernails, I'm looking at the shoes, and I'm looking at the teeth in that order. In that order. Fingernails, check. Teeth, check. Shoes, check. In that order. If one of them come up, the nail's too long, the nail's dirty, I don't know, can't deal with them. The shoes is dirty, ooh, can't deal with them. The teeth, oh. Oh, I really can't deal with them because I can't kiss them. So fingernails, teeth, shoes, check. They all cross. Cool. We can move forward. In that order. Hold on. What time is that? Oh, girl, it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> oh, you just bought your bully. Oh, it's lit tonight. <laughs> It's lit tonight. Yeah, bacteria breeds on just about anything, girl. You got to be careful. Crystal, girl, it's 5 a.m. Well, I really appreciate you tuning in, Crystal. 5 a.m., girl, and you watching my live? I really do appreciate that. That's love. That's real love right there. I appreciate that. 5 a.m., because <laughs> I'm not a morning person. Let me tell you. Yes, teeth, fingernails, shoes, cool. Cool, we good. And let me explain. So teeth, it's just hygiene. Fingernails, hygiene, shoes. Shoes? Now, let me tell you about the shoes. I don't go based off of... Oh my God, are they Gucci? I don't care about that, okay? I go off of, are they clean? <laughs> if the shoes are clean, girl, that means he takes care of himself. He takes pride in himself. Most likely, he's a clean person with a good hygiene. Ooh, you got men out here with white tongues? <laughs> Ooh, 11 11. It's 11 11. Thank you, Kiki, for that. Yeah, that's why I check all of those boxes like teeth, fingernails, shoes, check mark, check mark, check mark. Okay, good hygiene. That's what that means to me. I don't like dealing with dirty men. That's disgusting. So, uh, teeth, fingernails, shoes, we good. Yeah, feet are important too. I see. <laughs> 
You know what? Now that I really think about it, I've dated a lot of pro athletes. <laughs> and I don't know if there's any women on here that's dated pro athletes, but they got some feet that are just ran the hell over. <laughs> I'm talking about ran over. I'm just like, oh my God, your feet are trash. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I think that's kind of like the norm for pro athletes. Yeah, they just, they got some ran over feet. They feet just be ran. I'm like, when you look at their feet, all my life I had to fight. All my life I had to fight. And this is the thing. They be having good money, too. So it just be like, so you get your feet done and they still look like that? <laughs> you went and got, you got a what? <laughs> you got your feet done and they still look like that? That's crazy. So, yeah, that's what I be dealing with sometimes. I be like, ooh, girl. I mean, you you need to go get your feet done. That's crazy. You shouldn't be walking around like that. How you make that much money walk around with feet like that? All my life I had to fight. Kute, what's his name? Kute Kente, he ain't got nothing on you. Kute Kente? Nothing. On him. My ex was 6'6", six, six, and you would be surprised if I showed you a picture of what he looked like. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can only imagine. They feet just be ran over. Like, and, and then a lot of the pro athletes, like, they've been playing a professional sport since they were kids. So it's just like, they feet them been through some stuff. <laughs> they feet them been through some stuff, you know? Like, I just see like, dang, your feet really messed up. <laughs> oh, yeah, so... Yeah, you know, toes just be crusty. It, I don't even know what it is. It's like, they toes ain't even crusty. It's just like their feet are just jacked up. I don't know how to explain it. I dated a soccer player. I said, his, listen, he had feet, but like they would go this way. Like his foot would be straight, but like his toes would go this way. I'm like, oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> oh my God, I'll never forget that. I'm like, you can't straighten it? <laughs> Don't you need to go to the doctor for that? <laughs> so yeah, it was just, oh yeah, they be going through it. That was, I, that was an experience for sure. He was a soccer player, but he was a Jamaican. And his, his feet were like, I'm like, damn. Just crusty. Just crusty. It messed up. Uh, soccer, it messes up your feet. <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh my God. I didn't listen, I never played soccer. So I I had no idea. But them feet, whoo. She said Jamaican Jamaican men got busted feet. I'm sure they do. <laughs> Yeah, get a petty. Men, make that a norm. If you're trying to impress a woman, get a pedicure. Pedicure. Get a pedicure. You need to get a pedicure, okay? Don't be walking around looking like a hot mess. I be telling my brothers all the time, get a pedicure. Now, my younger brother, he got some nice feet. My younger brother, he got some really, he got pretty feet. He He's that type of guy. You know, he got pretty feet, which is crazy because he was an athlete. He played all through college and everything. He was an athlete, but he got pretty feet. He just lucked up. I don't know what that's about. Now, my older brother, his feet ran over. I'm like, dang, why it look like all your life you had to fight with your feet? What happened? So he got some feet that just messed up. He just got feet that's messed up. I don't recommend. <laughs> but he do, and that's the thing. His feet are so messed up. He still gonna get his feet done and they still look a hot mess. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Some soccer players play barefoot. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is, but 
he had some really that was the only that I would have to say. To think, I don't think I ever saw his feet. I don't think I ever saw his feet. Like I dated an I dated an NFL player too. I don't think I ever saw his feet. I think I don't think I ever saw his feet. I can't speak on that one, but soccer player, not good. I don't think I ever saw his feet though. I never knew soccer did that, but now that I think about it, that track, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, my daddy got the type of feet. He can't keep a toenail to save his life. He always losing a toenail. I'm like, every time I see you, your toenail missing. What are you doing? <laughs> he always stubbing his toe or something, hitting it on something, and then boop, the toenail just pops right on off. I'm like, damn. And then, you know, when you get older, it takes longer for your toe, like something as simple as a toenail to heal. I just be like, you always got a missing toenail. That is disgusting. <laughs> oh, runners who play sports and all that make the toes go crazy. I play <laughs> no comment. I play soccer. Wait, I play soccer with my feet when I was younger, so they do play without shoes. It hurt. Yeah, I, don't you think it hurts? When I was younger, I used to give my dad pedicures. I did too. I did too. I used to do that too. Hey, he got nice. That's what I'm saying. When my dad was younger, he did. He had decent feet. He had decent feet. But then as he got older, the more he worked at his job, the more his feet became just horrible. Dang, ballerina feet are horrible. I'm showing. I'm going to look at that. Now that I think about it, <laughs> my dad has pretty feet and luckily inherited them. Lucky. People always be talking about how my feet are cute and I just be like, Instagram is something else. That's all I can say. I don't think I have cute feet, but I appreciate it. You be talking about your feet. I'm like, they are? <laughs> this app be gassing me just a little too much. Y'all got y'all think I got pretty feet? <laughs> People talk about, oh, you should sell your feet. You should sell your feet. I'm like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. If you say so. Oh, no. I, girl, I ain't, I'm not showing my feet. Mm -mm. I have learned to embrace my feet, though. I have. That's why I'm showing them more. But before, I never showed my feet. I'm like, oh, no, y'all not, not about to see my feet. I'm super insecure. That's the insecurity of mine. I don't feel like I have cute feet. I think mainly it's because I'm flat-footed. I'm flat-footed. I'm very flat-footed. I don't have I don't have an arch. Oh, you're taking ballet? Ooh. See, I like it when, when when black women do things that are just against, like, you know, the norm. But I'm going to log off. I was on here for two hours. So. Wow. So I really enjoyed talking with you guys. So I decided to start coming on live. So I, this is what I'm doing for those that are wondering. So one week I go live and then the next week I do recorded videos. I do. It's because of the wine I've been drinking. Let me put some, oh, ooh, since I'm on here. Now, what is this called? This is called, um, I'm not seeing it. What's it called? Vix. So I put Vicks on my lips and it gets rid of the dead skin. You should try it. I only do it in the summertime though, or not summertime. I only do it in the wintertime. Yes, Vicks. V-I-C-K-S, Vicks. You see that? 
Okay, I still got the, the wine stain. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you know what? I low-key love wine stains. Where are my wine drinkers at? Are there wine drinkers on here? I love it when I get a wine lipstick. I love it. I think it's so cute. Anyway. But whenever I use Vicks on my lips, it gets rid of the dead skin. I can't stand. I can't stand when my, my lips are just ashy. But I, I love a good lip stain. Ah, oh, so cute. It's like having lipstick on. I love it. Anyway. So, yeah. To help with my mental health, I've decided to do one week live and one week with recorded videos. So, next week, I'm going to come blazing. So, y'all need to be prepared. <laughs> I'm coming for Denny, okay? Just know I'm coming for her. Coming for her ass. I'm coming for her. I'm coming for Danny Lay. She made me so mad. She was, uh... Thank you, Holland, for even putting that in the... You know what? I really got to take care of y'all. I really do. When people take care of me, I got to take care of y'all. That's just how I was raised. Um... What is, what, Drizzy, that's her name. Yeah, like a lip stain. Drizzy, did y'all see the comment that she made? Did y'all see the comment Danny Lay made on Drizzy's uh, Instagram? See, I need to get, I need to get the live um, system that these other YouTubers be making so I can pull it up. Ooh, I should start scheduling them. Okay. Oh, y'all didn't see it. Oh, okay. So I won't talk about it. I'll just wait to my video. I'm, I'm still going to do a video. I don't care if it's a week late. But this is my week to be live. So um, I'm going to always alternate. So I'm going to go live one week and then I'm going to do recorded. Then I'm going to go live and then I'm going to do recorded. And then I'm going to go live and then I'm going to do recorded. So tonight I just wanted to talk about the Chad Wheeler situation because that was a hot mess. That was a hot mess. But I need black men to understand. It's like you're in the same position that we're in as black women. Okay. That photo that I put on my community tab, that's you and that's us as black women. That's you and that's us. We got people coming at us, white and black. So stop trying to pretend like just because this woman that's romantically involved as a black woman with a white man is a deal breaker or is a big deal. I am going to save the live for sure. Thank you so much. So I don't know why they're trying to make it seem like they know different than us. Just because she's romantically involved. You out here fighting the police just like we are. Regardless if we choose to date them or not. So I don't know why they try to. Don't take that angle with me because I'm going to shut that down real quick, real fast. Also to the swirlers out here. Um, keep swirling. <laughs> Listen, keep swirling because I'm going to keep doing me. So if you're doing you, I'm going to do me. We're going to be doing each other. You know what I'm saying? Separately. So keep swirling. Don't let these black men on here that got mommy issues make you feel bad. Because they out here fighting a white man, just like in some cases, you know, it's it's that could possibly be the outcome. They out here fighting a white man too. So, like... Please. Um, black men fetishes anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. I feel like black people are fetishes though. Like if I'm just keeping it a sack. They exploited our sexuality during slavery. So we're both seen as fetishes. Um, black men... I mean, they had sex farms back then. I, I I think I talked about this on here. I think I talked about this on here. Black men are BBCs. Black women are Ebony's. That's our stereotype. Jezebel's. That's our stereotype. So, black... And this is the thing that kills me about black men since we on this topic. <laughs> Uh, sorry. 
you're looked at as a fetish just as much as we as black women are. And in my opinion, this is just my opinion. I feel like they're looked at at a higher rate as a fetish than we are as black women. Like, listen, they got a, listen, Magnum, the company, y'all got a whole brand that y'all don't profit off of making money off your fetish. Y'all not seeing none of that money either. I said what I said, so if they try to come at you sideways, sis, go ahead. You can use that because I'll be using it. And I ain't even out here swirling like that. I'm single. I'm staying to myself. <laughs> if you're wondering, I ain't even dating nobody right now. But yeah, you can use that if you want to. I'm trying to look for, oh, hold on. Condoms. Who owns them? Let me see. Who owns it? I can, I can guarantee you it's not a white man. Back in 2012. You know what? This is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Magnum means great. It's Latin. I don't know. I just love educating myself on this type of stuff so I can use it for, you know. When black men be trying to attack me. Yeah, they're not making no money off of this. Wow. This is absolutely insane. Reading up on this. Wow. A white man. Hmm. Even so, yeah, they don't they um they don't even make money off their own fetish. So Pay them no mind. Until they start taking charge, um, start making money off of their fetish, maybe they can come for you when you swirl. <laughs> Black man, come out with a condom. Make some money off your BBC. Then we can have a conversation about swirling. Until then, stay in your lane. Okay? So y'all have a good night. Um, but definitely use that when they try to attack you because no, nah, we don't do that. So y'all have a good night and I will catch you guys. What's today? Start Wednesday. I will catch you guys. Maybe I'll go live Friday. Maybe. So y'all have a good night. Toodles. Hold on. How do I exit out of here? <laughs> oh, wait, it's down here. I'm still new to this. Good night. <laughs>